Hi, today we are going to learn how to create this carved concrete text look in Photoshop. So, let's start. Take a new document. Then take Type Tool to write some word. I am using this font, which I'll link to below. Now write your word. Then press Ctrl T to transform and scale that up, and align it to the center. Now take a new layer, change foreground color to black and press Alt Backspace to fill with black. Selecting the black layer, hover the cursor over the text layer and Ctrl click to make a selection, now hide that original text layer. Then press the Create Mask button to create a mask. Now press Alt click on the mask, then we can edit it directly. Selecting Mask, go to Filter and Filter Gallery. Then first we will go to Brush Stroke section and select Spatter. Then set the value to 15 and 15. Then click on the new filter tab here. Then go to the sketch section and add stamp. And change the both values to 15. Now we have to do another round of roughening up the edges by using mask. So, right click and apply that mask and commit to this new shape as letters. Now press Ctrl click to make a selection and then click here to create a mask. Then selecting mask, I'm going to filter, pixelate, crystallize. Set the value to 15. Hit OK and let me zoom in and we can check out what that did. The filter was applied to a mask, it just created these little missing chunks, which gives this kind of chipped away look. Now bring the first texture and adjust the size. Then hovering in between those two layers, Alt-click to create a clipping mask. Now, holding Alt and drag the layer to the top to create duplicate. Also clipping mask this duplicate. Then select the mask of this layer. Then go to Filter, Pixelate, Crystallize. This time put value 80. Hit OK. We are going to use the Crystallize filter one more time. And set the value to 5, just to get some little rough details in there. And OK. Now go to Effects, Bevel and Emboss. Reset to Defaults. Change the style to Outer Bevel. Set the depth to 70. The direction must be up, then the size to 50. Change the global light angle as per your need. Now change the highlights to Color Dodge and put Opacity at 20%. Then the shadows to color burn, and opacity to 60%. Now go to this Blending Options tab and turn the Fill Opacity to 0. What this does is makes the entire layer transparent, but it leaves any effects. Hit OK. So we've got some good chipped away areas. Now we're going to add another texture into those areas, just to give it another level of detail. Bring the other texture and place it on top. Then clipping mask it. Here, we have to create a mask for that layer. So we're going to control click on the mask of the previous layer and press create mask button. Then press control I to invert it. And set that layer to linear burn mode. Now bring the fill down to about 30, because Linear Burn is one of the layer styles that blends in a more attractive way when you bring the fill down rather than the opacity. First thing we're going to make a copy of this main layer by holding Alt and then drag it down, 
and place it underneath the original. Now delete the mask on this layer. Then press Ctrl T to transform that layer, and hold down Shift Alt and scale it symmetrically. Now take the brush tool and resize the brush and make sure the hardness is at 100. Then paint in a few of the explicitly missing details. Paint over these areas where the illusion of depth is falling apart, primarily on the corners. Follow the process carefully. Now I'm going to put that same texture into the layer. Holding Alt, drag this texture down and put it over the layer, and then Alt-click to create the clipping mask. Selecting the copy layer, click on Effects, Bevel, and Emboss. First, reset to defaults, and then going to set the depth to 300, the size to 70. Change the highlights to color dodge mode and opacity to 20. Then change the shadows to color burn and opacity to 60%. Then change this gloss contour to this S-curve over here. Hit OK. To create more differentiation between the main layer and the copy layer, select the main layer and go into Effects, and use Drop Shadow. Reset it to default. Switch the Blend Mode to Color Burn. Then set the opacity to 30, the distance to 100, and the size also at 100. That is looking good. Here in main layer, we can notice it's a little too crisp on the corners, a little photoshoppy. Go to filter menu, then choose blur more from blur. The nice thing about this is, it just blurred the layer that defines the edges not the texture at all. Now rename the copy layer to 3D. And make a copy of it. Clear the layer style and rename it to shadow. Now copy the shadow layer and rename it to light. Take the same texture as background which we have used in text layer and place it below light layer. Then resize and align it according to your choice. Now, get back to the shadow layer. Press Shift F5 to open fill and under content select white and then here in mode select behind. Then go to filter and in blur gallery, select a path blur. Drag this little handle here and kind of approximate the angle of lighting and then change the path blur type to rear sync flash. Set the speed to 150 and this endpoint speed to 200. So, this one always takes just a minute to process on my machine. Now change the blend mode to multiply. Unhide the light layer and fill the background with white using the previous method. Press Ctrl I to invert the layer. Now go to Filter and in Blur Gallery choose Path Blur. This time reverse the direction. We are going to use the same settings. Now change the blending mode to color dodge, and bring the fill down to 20 rather than the opacity.
Here is before and after. Now we have to lighten up the background a little bit to create some contrast. Selecting the layer, open Adjustment Layers and choose Levels. Adjust the value according to your choice. Now select the 3D layer and zoom in. The only problem here is the light and the shadow aren't really interacting with each other. So go to Filter and Blur, Gaussian Blur. Adjust the value according to your need. Now we have to do a final adjustment and to bring a little contrast into the entire image. Select the very top layer open layer adjustment and choose levels. Set the values as per your need. This is the final result. If you like the video hit the like button and if you want to see more tutorial like this, subscribe the channel. See you soon.